Hindenburg Research, a minimally U.S.-invested firm, targets the Adani Group, one of India's major detectives. Nathan Anderson's organization is well known for resolving issues with corporations such as Nikola Corporation, Clover Health, and Lordstown Motors. A well-known truth about the Adani Group or umbrellist Gautam Adani is that in India, he is a renowned name behind Jeff Bezos, the world's second biggest revivalist. Adani has become the face of rapid expansion as India continues to expand into one of the world's greatest economies. Adani began his career as a diamond merchant in Bombay after dropping out of journalism school. He then revived India's most vexing adversary, the Adani Group, whose holdings range from data to military, media, mining, and green energy. The Adani Group is a prominent economic player in India, controlling one-fifth of the country's energy transmission and one-fifth of the cement industry. Adani's company also owns vital properties such as demos, airports, and ports and it warehouses one-third of Indian grain. We want to invest $70 billion in everything from green luggage to photovoltaic solar panel production by 2030, making us one of the world's greatest green energy corporations. Adani is one of India's largest investors and taxpayers. This means that frauds are vital to countries, financial markets, medicine experts, and the entertainment industry. Because of his long affiliation with Narendra Modi, an Indian from the same state of Gujarat, the question of Gautam Adani's personal integrity is critical. Adani's last connections were uncovered once more in 2014, when Adani was weeded out following Modi's victory at Voltage. The entire situation began on January 24, when the Hindenburg study issued comments about what it believes to be the largest business activity in history, which is likely to be published. Hindenburg issued a report about the Adani Group shortly after hearing about it through word of mouth and learned a lot. The Hindenburg Report was most likely the most widely read paper in India. It was read by every bank and financial sector in the country during the week of the bailout. It will then determine that it has rejected all interactions with the persons with whom it is conversing. Adani's enterprise value surged by more than 50% in the subsequent period as a result of the report's publishing. Between this modest investment firm and the world's newest relative, a guy, a classic David and Goliath story is now unfolding. And I'm not sure how it'll be completely new. Why was the Adani Group made public? Indeed, Hindenburg, who had sought for an investigation for two years, claimed that Adani had engaged in flagrant stock trading and accounting fraud. Hindenburg utilizes offshore money to control Adani, the company's largest con artist in its history. They allege that the company's loans are extremely short-term, placing the company at risk of failure. Hindenburg claims Adani has loans to settle the levy and pushes strongly. The position of Gautam Adani's older brother, Vino, with an offshore laptop capable of asserting authority over him is essential to most of the market manipulation. Some currency firms get ultimate ownership through proxies and invest virtually entirely in Adani Enterprises. Alara, which is not located in London, is one of the companies scheduled to disclose. Alara says that Sir Joe Johnson, the former British Prime Minister's brother, controls $3 billion in Adani shares, with one of the funds possessing 99% of Adani's assets. General Boris Johnson resigned as Alara Capital's director on February 1, just days after this story was published. I finally understand that my role in the field of financial regulation requires a longer-than-expected ownership maturity period, so I resigned accordingly," he said at a press conference. Hindenburg is not alone in highlighting Madani's use of small Indian firms primarily as one of its auditors as a red flag. In the era, Adani switches its UK subsidiaries audit from a big four firm to Crow UK, the UK's 12th largest auditor. The fact that Adani is already in difficulty doesn't assist his cause. The company was salvaged in 2007 when it linked up with a notorious stock taker to raise its claim. Members of Gautam Adani's family have previously been investigated for fraud and stock market schemes while serving as executives of Adani Group Enterprises. And the study goes into great depth on all of this. Hindenburg states in the report that the Adani Group has been beset by accusations and accounting fraud in the last year and he gives a list of 88 questions relating to these allegations, which the Adani company thinks would provide conclusive answers. They contend that the findings should call the group's hugely indebted growth plan into question. Adani's relatives claim to have utilized offshore firms to launder money from the group's other companies. 
This is purportedly due to price surges that value companies at exorbitant levels. Even if the facts are ignored, the corporation proposes Adani seven key regional enterprises. Four of them have residual revenue accruals from the germ tax and are down 85% due to the ceiling on a strictly fundamental basis. Hindenburg issued bonds and non-deliverable exchange derivatives by short-selling Adani Group entities. An NYU model studied the article and replied on Twitter. The Adani Group has exploited the worst link in India's story. Family agglomerations that prioritize military strength, financial markets where momentum trading is all appreciated, and political institutions by coffins, notwithstanding fraudsters' obsession with indicators. Nevertheless, given the number of companies in India, we'll need to go further to determine whether these are scams. To fulfill the Hindenburg study's motivation, it should be mentioned early on in Adani's attempt on the day the report was published. We need to talk about how to respond to Adaniga and how a similar controversy might influence India's mining industry. But first, let's speak about Adani's most recent contacts and how they aided him in becoming one of Asia's finest bacteria. Gautam Adani's stutter began in 2003, when he endorsed Gujarat Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Modi earned what he deserved for the out-of-control riots that shook the state a year ago. Adani openly violated Modi's reducing business terms and jeopardized his career in order to potentially attack them. Since then, as Modi's political career has progressed, his friend Adani has grown in the economic world, and naturally, the issue of restoration has been broached. For example, when the Indian government approved the privatization of six airports in 2018, it sought laws that would allow companies with no international expertise to operate. Gautam Adani, an industrialist with no experience running airports, has opened all six. Adani has grown to become one of the country's largest port operators. In news interviews, Adani has stated that his method has benefited him by linking corporate interests with government credit. We believe he follows the law at all times. Adani has made long-term investments in places where women are not supporters of Modi's agenda and where the government is prioritized. This is where India invests in the income required to meet its rapidly increasing electricity consumption while also investing in its long-term priority, renewable energy. As India sets ambitious targets to decarbonize its economy, opposition MPs in India have long suspected Adani and Modi of having a linked relationship with a final court state steering institute and bail contesting Hindenburg's charges. What exactly is a Hinden bag? Nate Anderson's Hindenburg Research is a short-selling activist hedge fund. Anderson's publicity is most known for his release of a film urging the creation of a video depicting Nikola's electric vehicle elevated technology in its entirety. Nicholas CEO, Trevor Milton, got the medal in part by using this proof to encourage him. They are not looking into a joint stock business. Hindenburg investigated using the Ponzi scheme, and because there was no way to sell the tiny Ponzi scheme, Anderson's business filed a whistleblower claim with the SEC, placing the lab in a position to pay up the funds if it collected a substantial sum. Anderson also applied for the Pulitzer Prize in investigative journalism with the Hindenburg Report. As previously stated, Hindenburg holds short-term interests with Adani Group entities, and Hindenburg is not the first person at Adani Group to raise similar concerns. The Adani question has been circulating for quite some time. Economists, investors, and journalists have questioned whether these companies' leverage and earnings growth are sufficient to justify such exorbitant values. They also pointed out that several funds on the company's shareholder list sell very little Adani shares and hold very little other. Credit Suisse stated in a 2015 research titled House of Debt that the Adani Group was one of 10 significant corporations under severe stress, accounting for 12% of India's banking sector credit. Despite these reservations, the Adani Group has continued to raise finances, in part by borrowing from overseas lenders and shifting to green energy. Over the last decade, India has eclipsed Italy, France, and the United Kingdom to become the world's fifth largest economy. This is due, in part, to the high cost of Indian stocks, which many regard as a safer alternative to investing in China given US-China tensions. MSCI's India Index trades at 24 times earnings, representing a more than 50% premium to global stock indices. Companies in the Adani Group are much more costly than the average Indian stock. The seven largest Adani companies earned 375x on average. 
They, too, rose swiftly. Green energy had risen 900% in the previous three years prior to the release of the report. Adani Enterprises has increased earnings over the last 20 years but has trailed in profitability, in part due to a large amount of money being placed in the business. Companies with low margins do not normally trade at such a premium. Adani's expansion has been almost entirely supported by debt, and its borrowing rate has risen. Adani's debt has more than doubled in the last four years as the company expands into new markets such as 5G and green hydrogen. Yet, it appears that there has been a transition to equity in the last year or two, driven by lender concerns about leverage and high market prices to minimize debt issues. Adani Group has begun issuing shares to worldwide investors, including the sale of shares suspended by Hindenburg in the report. The Hindenburg report has now arrived at a particularly delicate time for Gautam Adani. The news came the same day that Adani began its $2.5 billion stock sale. The share offering is intended to illustrate the Adani Group's broad appeal. The majority of the Adani Group is held by very expensive, low-transaction, opaque offshore funds and state-controlled fund-related organizations like the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority. This share sale was made available to overseas investors after Adani Enterprises shares were searched more than 3,300% over three years. The issuing of shares was argued to be done to lessen debt and enhance the amount of freely traded shares. The new stock was being sold at a modest discount to its market value. For a stock offering to be successful, the old stock must trade above the new stock's price. Otherwise, no one will be interested in purchasing it. As the news broke just before the rise in paid-in capital, the stock price began to fall, and India's representative company was hammered and went public. This should have been the end of the agreement. Nonetheless, despite making little sense, Adani was able to sell his entire stock worth $2.5 billion. Therefore, who buys these new shares at a premium when existing shares in the market can be purchased at a far cheaper price? Things started to get strange. On the first day, institutional investors who had already subscribed purchased $750 million in equity. This was previously agreed upon. Nobody was interested in retail offerings on the second day. Why buy stocks when just 1% of possible stocks have been adopted? They weren't even interested in traditional equities that were accessible on the stock exchange at a lower price. On the third day, an international holding company in Abu Dhabi agreed to buy $400 million in shares. And this has influenced how the market operates. They were willing to pay 10% to 20% more than the open market price, indicating substantial support. The stock remained below the IPO price on the last day the deal was intended to close. The transaction appeared to be doomed. Right before the market closed, a note was issued stating that the offering had been fully registered. So, who was the most recent purchaser? According to the Financial Times, brokers believe there is substantial demand for India's largest company. They were paying more than they needed to. They compete with one another on a daily basis in business, but they appear to band together to defend their own from outsiders. India Inc. didn't want one of its members to be targeted by New York. Adani Enterprises stock gained about 3% after the acquisition was completed. Several doubts persisted, though. Things started to get strange. The price of Adani Enterprises fell further the following day. Even after the stock sale was completed, Adani had to decide whether to risk immediate investor losses while jeopardizing long-standing business connections. He withdrew his statement and cancelled the sale. This action intensified the worry over the financial viability of the Madani empire. Adani announced later that evening in regulatory filings that it was repaying proceeds and retracting completed trades due to the exceptional circumstances and current market volatility. Given the significant variations in stock prices, the board felt it would be immoral to pursue the matter. Now, how did the Adani Group respond to Hindenburg's concerns? They responded with a 413-page reply that compared the Hindenburg report to an attack on India. The Adani Group angrily refuted the claims, calling them lies from the Manhattan Madoffs. Despite the fact that the report was 413 pages long, it appeared rushed and missing key specifics. Adani has just dismissed the majority of Hindenburg's concerns as disproven, unfounded, or deceptive assertions. The majority of the 413-page report was supplemental, and it appeared to validate some of Hindenburg's worries, though the essential parts of the responses weren't always apparent. 
Brother Bino Adani Adam, for example, claims that because he is not a connected party, his transactions through shell companies do not need to be disclosed. Notwithstanding the fact that family members of firm founders are considered connected parties under Indian securities law, Adani Group's general counsel declared that the company and associated laws under Indian law are being evaluated for corrective and punitive action against Hindenburg Research. Hindenburg denied any impropriety in the Adani statement, saying the Indian company was leveraging patriotic ties to avoid dealing with genuine issues. They said that nationalism or exaggerated responses could not be used to mask the hoax. They stated that if Adani is serious, they will welcome any legal action. We must also file a case against the US, where we operate a short seller. Adani announced the early return of its $1.1 billion equity deferred loan on Monday, calling it a proactive measure to reduce leverage. Later, it was found that lenders such as Barclay, Citigroup, and Deutsche Bank had sent Adani a margin call for 50% of the cash loan as security. That suggests the value has decreased. Adani has decided to pay off the debt in full rather than depositing cash on a loan that would not mature until next September. The Adani Group has denied taking any profit margin. We don't know how this conflict will end out right now. According to Bloomberg, numerous hedge funds are on the other side of the Hindenburg trade. They're buying Adani stock and bonds saying Adani's port, power and green energy company's robust assets and cash flow will serve the dead and shield investors from losses from several future defaults. Following Modi's actions, Indian opposition lawmakers urged that the country's market regulator and stock exchange address Hindenburg's charges. The Securities and Exchange Board of India, India's SEC counterpart, said it was aware of unusual price changes in significant company stocks and will investigate and take appropriate action if told. CBI has continuously followed and will continue to follow this strategy for company-level challenges. He claimed that the situation has reached a tipping point for India. The Indian economy is booming. It will be the world's most populous country and a member of the G20 main economic groups. The fallout from the affair plainly threatens the country's reputation as a topic for developing market investors looking for an alternative to Chinese stocks, which are currently unavailable. The benchmark Sensex index in India trades at 3x, but it is not inexpensive. It is being booked double that of China and Japan. Despite the merits of the Hindenburg, it is a scandal that I hope goes away. Investor trust in transparency, governance, and institutional quality is critical to India's growth story. When such allegations are made, these institutions should be seen to take them seriously rather than brushing them under the rug. The organization claims it will be able to satisfy its financial obligations with ease. Last Saturday, index provider MSC stated that it was closely watching Adani shares and factors that could impact its eligibility for inclusion in the index. They have declared that the index weights for Adani Group equities will be changed soon. Following a review of how many shares are freely transferable and feedback from various market participants, Certain Adani Group investors stated that they should no longer be classed as floating shares under our approach. Many argue that if cash is needed, Adani should sell one or more of its ports, power plants, or other assets. Returning to the stock market for another stock sale may be out of the question, given recent events and the gloomy clouds hanging over the company, according to the most recent tweet on the issue. He stated that while this is Adoni's tale, India's reaction to it would have an impact on the trajectory of India's story. This is a chance for Indian institutions, government authorities, banks, and exchanges to address existing difficulties. Yet, these fixes will not be simple. Have a pleasant day, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.